Welcome to another Just Ask AYN Facebook Live and tonight's session is known as Allah's Mercy Encompasses Everything Alhamdulillah tonight I'm joined with my dear good friend Ustaz Abdul Mateen Ustaz I'm, how are you? Alhamdulillah and I'm also joined with uh, our dear friend as well Ustaz Shazwan I hope the viewers are watching uh, our session tonight inshallah uh, have um, I mean uh, rested have done probably done their taraweeh uh, safe with their families uh, having peace of heart mm -hmm. so um, I hope all of you are doing well and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, bless us uh, especially in tonight's uh, session so mm -hmm. alhamdulillah uh, we are yet again uh, blessed to have uh, another session uh, to share some of the good things and especially uh, in this case to remind one another, one, one another about mm -hmm. the benefits and the blessings of the holy month of Ramadan yeah, inshallah yes yeah. speaking of the holy month of Ramadan Ustaz Abdul Mateen uh, perhaps we can remind the viewers that today, or rather tonight, we have fasted, was it seven days? We are yes. in there, there about so seven days of the month of Ramadan, mashallah. We, are, we, are, we have passed a week. Eh? Yes, alhamdulillah. Oh, uh, and I hope that you've been using this uh, time at home, uh, maximizing your, your worship, uh, and also uh, getting in tune and reconnecting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inshallah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestow us uh, the rest of the Ramadan. Um, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us the strength to be able to achieve the best that we can uh, the in, best in, the, in the last uh, few weeks, inshallah. inshallah. Uh, so in light of uh, tonight's uh, session, inshallah, mm -hmm. before we move forward to, towards the topic uh, for tonight, we shall, I believe we can uh, recap uh, some yes, of the things we that we um, went through last week or, or last week's session, mm -hmm. which was about... Um, I believe it's about seeking uh, mercy and finding hope. Eh? Yeah, seeking Masha mercy Allah. and finding hope. So uh, you're putting me on the spot now, Ustaz Ibn so I have to think, what did I speak last week? Yeah, so, so I think Ustaz Ridwan, eh, he uh, was the <laughs> other anchor in, uh, in the show last week. And I think he shared something about challenges. Right? Yes. We are currently in a different situation. Our Ramadan is a different way being, being spent. But despite that? But despite that as well, I mean, uh, despite the current uh, or challenges that we mm -hmm. are facing, uh, this is still a month of mercy. The month of Ramadan is a month of mercy, mm -hmm. and it's a it's a month that we should look forward or, or to strive to 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 search for that uh, for the, for the mercy of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. That is, in fact, uh, infinite in nature. It is uh, limitless. Mashallah. Uh, yes. And therefore, we should uh, strive for it. Inshallah. And I think that's why the title tonight is Allah's mercy encompasses everything, right? Wa rahmati wasiat kulla shay, as how he says in Surah Al-Araf. And it is true, as you mentioned, Ustaz Abdul Matin, it is limitless. <coughs> uh, and so tonight, we, we are trying to discuss a little bit of uh, that limitless mercy. Yes. We want to know um, how we can seek mercy, number one, through our supplications. Supplic when we say the mercy of Allah SWT, we don't have to think too hard because He Himself, Azza wa Jal, He has defined Himself as being Ar-Rahman and Ar-Rahim, Ar right? And the mercy of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, in that sense, it, um, I mean, one thing we should uh, take note of is that his mercy transcends our very definition of mercy. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's very uh, hard to actually for us to, to comprehend the true nature of uh, the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because it's, it is vast, it mm -hmm. is too vast. It, is, it transcends our, our definition of, of mercy. So it, it, the measurement of mercy then is not whether we feel uplifted or not. It, it goes beyond that. It is based upon His divine wisdom, uh, based upon His uh, divine uh, uh, compassion, mm -hmm. His divine... Uh, uh, love and, and can kindness towards us, mm. both in this world and the hereafter as well. Yeah, I believe. So, but then when we say uh, Ar-Rahman Rahim, we, I mean we are always repeating it, right? Yes. In our salat, through our basmala, through mm. our fatiha. Yeah. So uh, about that, I think um, it's good for us to ponder that yes. uh, when we say Ar-Rahman Rahim, when we say Bismillah Ar-Rahman Rahim, in fact, you know, both these two words Ar-Rahman and Rahim come from the same root word. You know, in, in Arabic, I believe. Um, uh, for those who learn Arabic, they know that there is always a root word for for uh, masdar, masdar, no, a root word yeah. for for every uh, Arabic words, mm -hmm. and uh, Rahman and Rahim come from the same root word, which is Rahma, mm -hmm. and they basically mean uh, mercy. Mm -hmm. So why then does Allah Subhanahu wa Taala differentiate between? Uh, he express in two in two terms, uh, Rahman and Rahim. Mm -hmm. And scholars have discussed this, and I believe uh, the uh, the simple answer to that is that. Uh, when we uh, when we un when we read uh, Bismillah Rahman Rahim, Ar Rahman basically means the to to to, uh, to express the vastness of Allah's mercy that co that um, comprises of 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 those even those who believe in Allah Subhanahu and those who probably don't believe in Allah so Subhanahu Wa Taala. For all of existence, right? All of existence, and in fact, both in this world and the hereafter as well. Yeah. But when you say Ar Rahim, it uh, it is also that uh, to say that. 
it is not just on the general or generic level mm -hmm. but to the specific, specific detail of creation itself meaning towards those that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have promised those uh, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have promised his mercy in the mm -hmm. day after so it's a, it's a more detailed and a more um, a refined understanding of mercy uh, mm -hmm. so in that sense his mercy comprises both the generic world and the um, Precise and detailed. Specific, so we recite yeah. Ar-Rahman Rahim a lot of time, and this reminds me of of, uh, of an ayah in Surah Al-An'am, verse 54, hmm. where Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "Kataba Rabbukum ala nafsihi rahma." Allah has uh, described Himself uh, <coughs> uh, as the, uh, the one with mercy. Mashallah. Right? Uh, he is known to have mercy and be merciful. Subhanallah. Anhu man amila min kum su'an bi jahalatin, thumma taba min baadhi wa aslaha fa innahu ghafur rahim. Again, He repeats. Allah. If we go back to Allah, return to Allah, seek His mercy, then insha'Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is known to be all-forgiving and all-merciful. Merciful, mashaAllah. So, um, when we talk about uh, seeking the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to supplications or mm. through dua, uh, for that matter. Now, um, what, what, is, what is dua? Yes. Why is it so important? I was just about to ask you, mashaAllah. <laughs> I asked you first. Oh, sure. Why could... is it so important? <laughs> Uh, as a Muslim to practice supplications. Yes, um, so dua is uh, it's a it's a it's a it, it's a very important essential part of our life uh, as as believers as Muslims. And in the Hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentioned, "Lays a shay akram an Allahi min al dua." There is nothing more no uh, uh, there is nothing more noble uh, to Allah subhanahu wa taala than uh, a dua. Mm -hmm. And uh, in that sense, uh, also there, there is a Hadith. Uh, that shows the gravity, uh, the gra the weight of, yes. um, of 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 praying dua. That mm -hmm. uh, uh, is uh, in one aspect. The other aspect is that dua also is it's uh, it's uh, the expression. It it gives us uh, I mean uh, for for the servant to express his servitude to Allah subhanahu wa taala. Yes. We want we, we need Allah subhanahu wa taala. It expresses our our iftikar, our our need and uh, necessity for Allah subhanahu wa taala. Our yes. reliance for Allah yes. subhanahu wa taala. Uh, it's also like uh, a way for us to also connect with Allah subhanahu wa taala. Yes. Right outside the salat. Yeah, through our dua, we can also pour our hearts out, our worries, um, our our wishes to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and we know that all of these wishes are not too big for Him yes. to answer, right? And and we and we place it in the proper place, which is to seek it um, in Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Mashallah. So it's very important eh, as a Muslim to not underestimate the power of dua. But also beyond that, we are in the month of Ramadan, yes. and we will be fasting. Yes. I believe there is uh, an extra merit. Uh, with regards to uh, dua or supplication of a yes, fasting person. Yes, you can share with us. Oh, share yeah, share I will share. Okay. Now I'm faster than you. So, uh, <laughs> so uh, we, we know that there is this famous uh, saying eh, uh, of the Prophet Sallallahu where he says that uh, there are three groups of people. I translate for you. There are three groups of people uh, who of which their supplications will not be rejected. Uh, of these three, one is a just uh, leader. Uh, number two, asa imu hi na yuftiru. Right, uh, a fasting person at when the moment he when he is uh, breaking his fast. Yes. Uh, watul mazlumi and uh, supplication of a person who has been wronged. Eh? Mm. So in this hadith, there are three groups of people, and particularly which uh, pertains to us in this month is the dua of a, of fasting, a person fasting person when he breaks his fast. Mashallah. So please, uh, we are now in this blessed month of Ramadan. Please take the opportunity when you break your fast to insert a, a uh, dua, dua to to make dua to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Uh, of course, to accept your your fasting and any other dua that you may have, uh, and you want Allah to answer yes, in the day and in the night of, of Ramadan, for that matter. Yes. And we have, uh, in fact, uh, list some of the some of the supplications and dua that are regularly or encouraged by scholars uh, to to recite in the month of Ramadan. Mm -hmm. um, you so, want to share the first one? Inshallah, uh, very fast. So share one. Yes. And so, <laughs> for the first dua, Inshallah, um, there are some some of these duas. Now, speaking of the duas in Ramadan. Uh, it is actually uh, important to note that we can actually pray any dua that we that we, we want to express our hope, our our fear, our our need. Mm. That is the the um, spirit of dua. The, the spirit of dua is, uh, by itself, lah. But in that sense, uh, scholars have also advised us to 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 read uh, some duas uh, which have been taught. Yeah, which yeah. have been taught. Uh, uh, in fact, some of them are from the prophetic traditions, mm -hmm. and particularly, I mean. Some of us have went through phases where we, when we want to pray, uh, pray to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, we can't even express what yes. we need. Sometimes yeah. we are, apa macam, uh, we are we start unable like yeah, to find the words. Yes, right? mm. we start to 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 read the dua. So it's uh, it's um, beneficial lah for yeah. us to to uh, benefit from this dua. So, so we have of, what, what is the first dua? Yeah, you some of the dua is that um, that we are regularly recited mm -hmm. in the day and the night of Ramadan. Mm -hmm. 
Asyhadu an la ilaha bismillahirrahmanirrahim asyhadu an la ilaha illallah astaghfirullah nas'aluka aljannata wa na'udzu bika minan nar amin i repeat again asyhadu an la ilaha illallah astaghfirullah nas'aluka aljannata wa na'udzu bika minan nar now this uh, doa basically means uh, uh, i bear witness that there is no god but allah subhanahu wa ta'ala i seek forgiveness from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we ask you o oh allah for paradise and we seek refuge in you from the hellfire. Now, this is based from a hadith uh, narrated by Imam uh, uh, Ibn Khuzayma where mm -hmm. he mentioned that in this month, meaning the month of Ramadan, four things you should endeavor to perform. Four things you shouldn't leave or, or forget. Mm -hmm. The first is, or sorry, the first two uh, in Vietnam, uh, two of which shall be to please your Lord, to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. While the other two, to those without which you cannot make do, meaning we cannot leave them. Mm. You can imagine to leave them. Eh? Mm -hmm. uh, the first way, those uh, which shall be to please your Lord, meaning the first two, uh, that you should in great quantity okay, increase our uh, uh, in, in recitation to recite the shahada, La ilaha illallah, and seek, number two is to seek his forgiveness. So, Ashadu an la ilaha illallah, astaghfirullah. And as for the other two, which, uh, with which we cannot make do without it, mm -hmm. is that uh, you should be asking for Allah SWT for entry into paradise. Nas'alukal jannata And seek refuge for him from the hellfire or the, from the jahannam. Uh, wa bika minan nar. So it's very uh, encompassing, eh? very yes. holistic, right? Indeed. And I think we also can understand that when we're making our dua, we should aim for um, the best, right? Yes. And ask for the best from Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Besides that, we have this also popular dua which we read when we break our fast. Allahumma laka sumtu wa ala rizqika aftartu. That's a very popular dua being read. Uh, and then we have also ذَهَبَ الظَّمَأُ وَابْتَلَّتِ الْعُرُوكُ وَثَبَتَ الْأَجْرُ إِنْشَاءَ اللَّهِ So both of these du'a, generally they mean that uh, I have broken fast and I am um, eating from the sustenance from Allah SWT. In the second du'a which I read to you, um, the, thirst has, the thirst is gone and the veins are moistened and the reward has been earned if Allah will. So again, eh, uh, I think we had this discussion before we uh, came on live uh, that for a person who is fasting, the person has two points of happiness, mm. right? One of which is during breaking the fast. You're very yes. happy that you can, you're able to break the fast. Alhamdulillah, with Alhamdulillah. the sustenance of Allah SWT. Very happy. Eh? Very okay, happy. Nasi goreng, eh? nasi lemak. Nasi goreng, <laughs> ayah, eh? Hopefully, it's a healthy option. <laughs> and then, the other happiness is the happiness when the <laughs> fasting person... <laughs> yes, hina yal bahu. When the fasting person presents himself to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala in the hereafter, eh? Yes. Uh, so, when we, when we break our fast, it is, is, it, it is as if as we have uh, went through the whole day of fasting and then we are presenting this gift of uh, worship or this uh, struggle eh, of worship mm. to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so it's important for us to pray in that in that moment so don't rush to, to don't rush don't rush challenge eh? to, don't to rush. early to, to eat eh? yeah. of course <laughs> we need to, uh, apa, to eat early lah kan but we don't apa, macam become to apa um, tamak lah tamak, eh? <laughs> <laughs> to find okay. that word eh? okay Allah. there's also one more dua you want to yes, share with the viewers out there uh, famous eh, Ustaz Abdul Mateen uh, It's reported that Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha She asked the Prophet What dua should she read When she meets the light, the, the night of Laylatul Qadr mm -hmm. And the Prophet said You should recite Allahumma innaka afuun karimun Tuhibbul afwa fa'fu anni Which means Oh Allah you are the most forgiving uh, And the most generous And you love to forgive So please forgive me And we can also read together uh, In congregation And we say fa'fu anna Yes, so uh, beautiful dua. So please, you can already start reciting this dua in the month of Ramadan. And do increase uh, in great number lah to, to recite these duas. Now, we talk about dua, such as one. Mm. Would you like to share with us uh, your favorite dua? Okay, so uh, my favorite dua is uh, again with regards to mercy lah. Eh. Uh, it's a dua which the Prophet recited: Allahumma rahmataka arju. O Allah, I seek your mercy. Fala takilni ila nafsi tarafata aynin. Do not abandon me to myself even for an instant. Wa aslih li shani kullahu. And uh, make my affairs complete. La ilaha illa anta. There is no deity except you. So that is my uh, dua, which I want to try Masha and Allah. decide. That's very like, beautiful. Masha Masha Allah. Masha Allah. Um, so that's my favorite dua. But perhaps you want to ask the viewers out there to yes. also share your favorite duas with us. Yes. Uh, so um, you want to share your favorite dua, please. Share, you you know, know, should have asked me lah. Huh? <laughs> Anyways, um, now do share with us mm -hmm. in, the, in the comment section your favorite du'as uh, that you, you would like to share with us. In fact, I believe if you, by sharing uh, some of your favorite du'as uh, in the comment section, uh, others can actually benefit from, mm. from your du'a. It may be that the others uh, have not yet went through or exposed to that du'a. So I believe it's, uh, it's, uh, it's beneficial uh, for us to share uh, our, our du'as, inshallah. Yes, inshallah. Alhamdulillah. So uh, I guess we've talked about mercy uh, quite a bit. Now we want to talk about 
uh, or rather we talk about mercy through uh, supplications, eh, Ustaz Abdul So now we want to talk about how we can seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy through good deeds, by yes. doing good deeds. Now, uh, when we talk about good deeds, eh, I believe um, some of us or maybe the uh, general perception is that good deeds are specifically meant for um, ritual acts of worship like mm. praying like your uh, zakat paying zakat your fasting fasting your so these are of course they are good deeds and they are worship as uh, well they, they are forms of worship mm. that are highly regarded by, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mm. but when we talk about good deeds eh, uh, ma'roof or, or uh, khairat you know, good deeds encompass not just um, our ritual acts of worship but they are quite wide uh, in terms of uh, uh, it, its forms mm -mm. we can see that um, some of it uh, actually covers um, the social aspect as well. Mm. It, uh, it, it helps us, uh, it helps build a strong uh, community. Some of these things are actually from good deeds that uh, can actually help us to um, grant or seek the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah. Perhaps you want to share with us a li little bit about uh, being merciful, Ustaz Abdul Martin? No. Uh, In terms of action? No, th it's important. Uh, there's a hadith that actually explains this uh, quite um, um, uh, in detail eh? mm -hmm. So uh, in this hadith Rasulullah mentioned so, mm -hmm. by, he, by him uh, Which is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Whose hands uh, Whose hand holds my life Which is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah does, does not send his mercy Except to the To the merciful mm -hmm. Now the companions asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam um, Are we not all merciful The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, Answered to them Laisa bi rahmati ahadikum sahibahu yarhamun nasa bika yarhamun nasa bikafa it is not to be merciful merely to your fellow companions but also to be merciful to the community the whole uh, humanity as well mashallah so we we don't want to just um, uh, reserve eh, good deeds to just yes. a certain community we want to try to spread it to as many people as possible yes. now this reminds us of something we want to share with all of you uh, i hope you can see this somewhere on the screen uh, if not we want to share with you that there are some practical tips which you can do uh, in terms of good deeds to be able to seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy. Mm -hmm. uh, the first one is, of course, to be of service to one another. Eh? We have this famous excerpt of a, of a longer hadith uh, which reads, Man kana fi hajati akhihi kana Allahu fi hajatihi. Which means, whosoever fulfills the need of uh, a brother or sister, another person, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will fulfill his or her own needs. Mashallah. Mashallah. So we want Allah to help us out. Mm. Yeah, we are we are, we are, need, we are in need. We are needy to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And one of the ways to get Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's assistance is by helping other people. Mashallah. Perhaps, uh, for example, uh, if you need some help uh, to buy something online, I can help you out with that. Mashallah. For example. Eh? That reminds me of your shirt. It's very really nice. My shirt. shirt eh? uh, Alhamdulillah. <laughs> it's, a, it's a gift from Did a friend. Did you buy it online? Mashallah, online. Eh? <laughs> Um, yeah, and then maybe if you, um, I know you, you're a very good person, Ustaz Martin. Sometimes when I want to pray, you also put sajada for me before I pray. So, so even the small details, such uh, to that uh, to that extent, yes, are considered a service. You can to, you to can others. do it at home, eh? Very yes. simply, service to other people. Number two is to help relieve the burden of others around us. وَمَنْ فَرَّجَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ كُرْبَةً فَرَّجَ اللَّهُ أَنْهُ بِهَا كُرْبَةً مِنْ كُرَبِ يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ Whoever removes the troubles of another person, Allah will remove his troubles on the day of the election. MashaAllah, it is the day where we want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, to uplift suffering yes. from us, right? So maybe... And the third one, uh, mm. the third point is, uh, or the third uh, good deed mm -hmm. that we can uh, actually ponder or explore on is to cover the shortcomings of others. Mm -hmm. In hadith, Rasulullah SAW mentioned, وَمَنْ سَتَرَى مُسْلِمًا سَتَرَهُ اللَّهُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَ Meaning, whoever covers the fault or the shortcomings of other Muslims, mm -hmm. Allah will cover his fault or his shortcomings on the day of resurrection. Now we know that um, neither of us or none of us are spared from uh, ha having shortcomings. Yes. All of us uh, are not perfect. Yes. In that sense, it's, it's good for us to ponder upon uh, our past in the hereafter. And uh, regarding that, it's important for us to yet again reflect on ourselves that we shouldn't be too... Um, um, Maybe we shouldn't be too hasty in yes. documenting other people's shortcomings, right? And that now is it's very like relevant. A phenomenon, eh? phenomenon yes. now, eh? People like to document uh, everything. Uh, Whatever they see of other people's uh, shortcomings, yes. instead of maybe giving them proper advice, or yes. instead, if it's a serious thing, maybe reporting it to a higher uh, body, yes. uh, they put the photo on social media and That's circulate even it around, worse. Eh? shaming the they person. They make it viral. Uh, yeah, they yeah. So there's no benefit to the person at all. Um, so, so, so the act of uh, upholding truth is not to shame the, uh, the other person, but yes. to... Um, to correct uh, what, what, that, is, what yes. is wrong. When, when, when <coughs> wanting to, if you want goodness for one, one person, then you should do it 
with wisdom. Eh? Yes. Maybe you should uh, seek clarification with the person. Did you do this or not? Yes, and we shouldn't um, actually be too hasty in uh, putting it on public. Rather than we should actually, you know, ask the person directly. Correct. Yes. It may be that we are the one uh, who is. Uh, our perception, directed, our uh, perception yeah. of that of that thing itself. Yes, eh? exactly. Uh, and also, we know <coughs> the Prophet said, "Min husni Islam bil mar'i tarkuhu malayani." If it doesn't concern you, then it is a good Muslim act to leave it alone. Eh? Yes. And the last thing, Mr. Abdul Latif, last is uh, last is actually to offer food to others. Okay, mm. in hadith, uh, Rasulullah SAW mentioned, "Min mujibat al mawfirah itamul uh, itamul Muslim uh, as mm -hmm. um, Amongst the things that are made certain to receive Allah's forgiveness is to give food. To uh, other 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 person or other Muslims in those who are in hunger. Mm -hmm. Now, and this is very, uh, I believe, this is very um, relevant yes. uh, uh, in this month of Ramadan. Mm -hmm. Everyone's hungry. Everyone's uh, hungry. I mean, it's important for us to 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 provide, uh, you know, the necessities. I'm, to I'm others. sure you might have a personal experience with regards to providing food. <laughs> Mashallah, so, 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 so is very quick today uh, tonight. <laughs> eh? Mashallah. Yeah, this actually reminds me of. Um, um, uh, I mean, uh, we have a lot of uh, initiatives today, and these initiatives are, are not actually uh, new. It, it has been there for for quite some time. In fact, uh, I think I, I've been, I, I like to say, I've been part of a, uh, of uh, of a, an, an initiative uh, mm. to to distribute food uh, in Ramadan uh, mm. uh, with Bapa, mm -hmm. and um, they did it for for the whole month. Mm -hmm. And the thing that I would like to share is that it's not an easy. Uh, project it's logistically, it, it, it's it, it involves a lot of uh, logistical uh, preparations, uh, manpower, commitment. Mm. The uh, the the volunteers that helped us uh, during that uh, that whole month, they were not just uh, very supportive, eh? mm -hmm. but they were very enlightening. They they support uh, with you know um, with very positive positive your vibes. Mm. They 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 come um, on, on time. So uh, and in fact, you you make good friends uh, with these uh, good people with good intentions. And so I guess I, I guess the viewers have been seeing your photo. Yes, and what, this, what this is not uh, this year's photo. Eh? This is mm. uh, the 2000 past years photo. Uh, yeah, th the past two years. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, it's a 2018 project. Um, but yeah, it's not just uh, uh, there in the past. It's also here today uh, in this month. We have uh, a lot of initiatives are uh, coming up, and one of which uh, we c as you can see, maybe some of you can see, if, uh, the viewers can see, mm. Ustaz K. Eh? So here on one. Yeah. And, and uh, yeah, Ustaz Hiranwar and uh, some others from the AYN perhaps eh, and other Hatiza out there are assisting with the SG United Buka Puasa Initiative. Eh? So it's a ground up effort uh, to provide meals of breaking of the fast during the month of Ramadan. And these meals are pr uh, provided for healthcare professionals uh, and their families and also the zakat beneficiaries uh, and other families who require meals for uh, breaking fast. MashaAllah. MashaAllah. And we actually have... Uh, uh, a very uh, uh, relevant uh, documentation of, of, of this uh, project. I believe uh, we have uh, Ustaz Farul we are with us to, to share uh, about uh, his experience uh, in uh, in a short uh, while, right? In a short yeah, while, in a short while, short while, in a short while he'll, we'll, we will be uh, watching his video. Uh, but maybe just as a, a short side note, um, in terms of seeing people do good deeds, eh, Ustaz Martin, I guess it's a good motivator. Yes. Uh, it, it educates other people that hey, there are initiatives like this out there for yes. us to uh, be, a, be a part of. Uh, and for us who view these kind of actions or good deeds, let us put our heart in the right place. Let us think good of uh, our brothers and sisters' actions when they do good deeds. Uh, perhaps it is not for them to show, eh? uh, but it's for them to share goodness and to invite others to also join on board, inshallah. So inshallah. I guess uh, it's good to remind ourselves of yes, that. Yes, indeed. Um, it's a timely reminder, lah. Uh, especially um, uh, in light of uh, these current initiatives. Yes. Now, before we go to um, uh, hear on to Ustaz Faru to, mm -hmm. to share with us uh, his experience in uh, being involved in this uh, project, uh, we'd like to remind the viewers, uh, I, I'm sure some of you have started commenting on, uh, on, our, on, on this session. I hope uh, you do, have. Do keep on commenting. Do keep on yes, commenting. Yes, thank you very much for commenting and please keep on commenting. Uh, we'll be, we'll be, I think we want to read some of the comments. Oh yeah, we leave some mm. comments. <coughs> Okay, so we have uh, Zaidi Ahmad, mashallah. It's my cousin, eh? Is it? <laughs> <laughs> Assalamualaikum, uh, Mr. Smatin. Mashallah. We have uh, Siti Abdullah. Assalamualaikum, everyone. Wa alaikum salam, Rasulullah ta'ala barakatuh. Thank you for commenting, everyone. Uh, we also have um, Fitri Akila. Bismillah, Bismillah, Rahman, Rahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Wa alaikum salam. Wa alaikum salam, Rahmatullahi ta'ala wabarakatuh. Yes. Mashallah. Would you like to read the, the other comments? Okay, Shalala. so we have uh, a comment from Mr. Hairul Nizam. Eh? Very hmm. familiar, Mr. Hairul Nizam. <laughs> so you say that your favorite du'a is the du'a of Prophet Yunus inside the whale. 
uh, asking for mercy. I think he's referring to a doa which was Ridwan read a couple of weeks ago. Eh. Hmm. Uh, do you know the doa? Which is uh, La ilaha illanta subhanaka inni in kuntu minal zalimin. Zalimi, uh, what does he mean, Ustaz Shazwan? <laughs> <laughs> there is no God except you, Allah. Uh, and what's the, what's the uh, remaining? Uh, La the ilaha illanta subhanaka. Uh, glory be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is free from imperfections. Inni kuntu minal zalimin. Indeed, we are of the uh, wrongdoers. Wrong eh? uh, people who are unjust to ourselves. Yes. yes. And the last comment we're going to read at this juncture is from Nur Sakina. Thank you for writing in. She says, my favorite dua are, Rabbi inni lima anzalta ilayya min khairin faqeer. Masha Allah. Masha Allah. Eh? The, the dua read by Nabi Musa alayhi salam, right? Uh, when wanting goodness, any form of goodness eh? in, a very, in a very difficult situation. Masha yes. Allah. Very, very timely, very apt. And Thank it you so much. And it is particularly associated with? Perhaps you want to say that? I am I'm I'm referring huh? to... It's okay lah. So and and the other one is. But there's one more, is it? Yeah, we read that already. We read that already. Yes. So thank you for sharing this beautiful. So just want to tell you, the first twenty comments, eh? Yes. Inshallah, stand a chance to get your hands on this beautiful gift. I know you've seen it every week, so I don't have to show you in detail. But you will get a tote bag from Muslim SG and a notebook with inscribed with it is the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Anta ma'aman ahbabta You will be with those whom you love, you love. MashaAllah Now we also want to be with someone that we love very dearly And uh, perhaps we want to check out what Ustaz Fahrul Razi uh, Has been up to in the last week also uh, In this next video InshaAllah Assalamualaikum uh, Today is the first day of Ramadan First day of fasting I'm going for the SG United Buka Puasa Initiative To distribute food probably so that's the mosque was the under mosque there's no bubu distribution this year but probably you can find something at the buka poster initiative inshallah so i'm here at masling cc so this is what you don't think of united buka poster Yeah, mashallah. So I guess uh, we've seen Ustaz Fakhrul Razi the last week has been very busy helping out, relieving burden of other people. Uh, as how we mentioned earlier in, in the segment about the hadith where we should help as many people as we can relieve their anxieties and also helping out by giving them food, mashallah. And bonus is, uh, inshallah, we will be joined uh, by Ustaz Fakhrul Razi live with us now, yes, right now. Uh, is he ready? I, I hope he is. Uh, anytime soon. Uh, Ustaz Fakhrul Razi... You're on. Assalamualaikum Ustaz. Okay. Assalamualaikum. Thank you Ustaz Shazan and Ustaz Mateen. Bismillah, Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulillah. Assalamualaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. How's everyone? I hope you are doing well. Thank you for tuning in to muslim.sg. Alhamdulillah. Privilege to actually help at Buka Puasa.sg initiative to give meals. And this is one privilege that, Alhamdulillah, you can actually uh, do volunteer and do yourself, do, 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 do this deeds of good deeds in the month of Ramadan. As we all know, in this month of Ramadan, we usually uh, have this culture, have this initiative, have this, this thing that we always do that is feeding those who are big, making their fast, right? breaking their fast. So um, in my previous experience uh, working in a mosque, we can see people actually come in to donate a whole lot of food, for those who are actually doing their iftar. And we always do give to our neighbors some form of food for them to break their iftar. And, but sadly, unfortunately, here now, in this current situation, we are not able to do so. So there are still ways actually to actually receive these good rewards because this is based on the hadith of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam where the Prophet actually mentioned, whoever fits or whoever provides 
uh, a food or some form of food for those who are breaking their fast then he will get the rewards for, from that person as as much as that person is getting the reward of that fasting lah so it's actually some form of goodness that we don't want to miss in this month of ramadan so hence um let's do this because we have this opportunity to actually go to bookerpuasa.sg and volunteer ourselves it's very easy just go to that website and then you sign in and then you register which day you are free and available to actually volunteer at any of the community centers available there are about 20 community centers that are doing these services so they are actually providing 20,000 meals per day and distribute it to the zakat recipient and distribute it to those who may need to break their fast and need food to 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 have some food with for their family members so last friday in the first day of ramadan i managed to volunteer at Marsling cc so it was a nice experience there were other volunteers as well from uh, youth the youth from Masjid An-Nur and some other volunteers were there to help distribute. We, we, we went there and then there's some task delegation that they gave it to us. And I was tasked to actually check the temperature of those who actually came. And there are several other tasks that you can be assigned to. For example, ushering those people to the correct areas. And we see many people actually came and wanted to take this, this food. So it's actually... Uh, it's actually good lah that you feel that you can contribute in some way or another and this is one opportunity that I hope you will not miss. So do go to bukapuasa.sg and volunteer and even if you are not able to volunteer because they may have limited slots and things like that, you can still donate. They do need some form of donation. They are looking at getting $3 million I think. So yeah, if you have the means, you have some spare cash, this is the month of Ramadan, the rewards will be multiplied a whole lot more. So yeah, do take this opportunity to to donate and volunteer yourself and yep that's it i guess in terms of my experience so yep make prayers a lot make prayers for me and for others as well thank you so much assalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wabarakatuh wow masha allah eh, ustaz fakhru razi uh, thank you so much for your meaningful sharing and you were very cutely carrying your baby, eh, your Masha newborn. MashaAllah. Yeah, if that is not a sign of Rahma, I don't know what else, what else is. MashaAllah. <laughs> that is very <laughs> challenging for us. But, but despite that, mm. he, Alhamdulillah, thank you, so Faru, for making time for us. And he also made time to help out the community. If that's yeah, exactly, MashaAllah. as well. MashaAllah. Let's strive to uh, emulate that uh, kind of virtue. MashaAllah. So besides that, uh, talking about um, helping the community, maybe yes. you want to share with all of us, with Abdul Mateen. Something about good deeds. What are some of the ingredients which make up a good deed? No, we mentioned some of the, I think we, uh, we mentioned earlier on, some of the um, exam examples of good deeds that we can actually uh, try to emulate mm -hmm. uh, to seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy. Now, I actually went through uh, some of the, uh, some books and I, uh, I happened to <coughs> find um, a book. It's called uh, Kashful Humma, Bistina mm -hmm. Il Ma'roof for Rahmatil Umma. It's a book written by uh, a, a, a muhaddith, a scholar, uh, Sayyid Muhammad Alwi bin Alwi al-Maliki uh, The book is entitled Kashful uh, Huma, meaning relieving adversity by, you know, um, uh, creating or spreading, uh, spreading or, uh, or practicing uh, ma'roof, good deeds mm -hmm. uh, wa rahmatul ummah to exemplify with the mercy of, of, the, of, of Muslims mm -hmm. So in this hadith he mentioned, uh, sorry, in this book he mentioned some of the important notes that we should take off, uh, take note of uh, in light of uh, practicing or uh, you know spreading good deeds, so he mentioned that there are some uh, some not conditions, uh, some uh, aspects that we should uh, take note of. Mm. The first is to uh, he quote uh, a saying by uh, Al Abbas bin Abdul Muttalib, which is the uh, paternal uncle of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Now Al Abbas, uh, he is one of the um, younger uncles. Eh? The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam had, uh, had uh, another. Uh, had um, many other many uncles, uncles yeah. and Al Abbas is one of the younger uncles. In fact, I believe he is about uh, three years uh, older than the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So mm. they're quite close, lah. So Al Abbas, uh, he mentioned uh, uh, in in this in this quote, "La yatimul ma'roof illa bi thalathi khusalin: ta'jiluhu, tazghiruhu, wa satruhu." Satruhu, which basically means uh, the good deeds are not complete illa bi thalathi. Except by three, three, uh, three things or three, three, three points. The mm -hmm. first is to hasten upon it. Okay. Second is to tazghiruhu, uh, meaning to to not make it excessive. Okay. Um, uh, meaning it, it goes beyond our capability or, or capacities, or uh, in fact that um, to avoid from uh, showing off 
And then third is to 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 try at best to to Hi. cover it. Mm. Um, then you know, um, uh, showing it off just to seek the attention or the 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 the. Uh, acceptance of others, of other yeah, people, the base right? of others. Mm -hmm. That is not the main intention of doing good deeds. The good mm -hmm. deeds, doing good deeds, is to actually seek the um, pleasure, of, the pleasure of, Allah of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So, um, yeah. So I, I guess in this day and age, I with social media and whatnot. Yes. Uh, if we can try our best to conceal our good deeds, and that's good, alhamdulillah. But if, if perhaps you want to share it, then share it with the intention of. Um, Spreading and motivating others yes. uh, to also do good deeds. Yes, as well. and I'm sure some of you have uh, experience whereby when you when we scroll through Facebook or Instagram, and we found some uh, some of the, some good deeds. Mm -hmm. uh, we found some some of the things that are shared by others. Now this is um, some of the things that we can uh, benefit from, and they happen by by others sharing uh, these good deeds, uh, of course with the right intentions, inshallah. And with that, um, um, uh, the, the the book that I mentioned earlier. They were uh, the, the writer mentioned two more actually uh, in terms of um, uh, doing good deeds. So okay. he mentioned the, the 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 other points is that to avoid traits such as self admire Meaning when we, we do when we do good deeds, we shouldn't feel like as if we uh, have done uh, okay lah, settle lah, a perform, good job, you know. Perform, uh, <laughs> okay. So we shouldn't have that kind of uh, attitude lah. Mm. In fact, doing good deeds should uh, actually. Um, humble entails, us, eh? uh, humble us uh, should make us more humble mm. and then the other one is to uh, we should avoid by belittling other small good deeds or other good deeds uh, for that matter so uh, in that sense we shouldn't actually um, minimize the uh, we shouldn't minimize the the, the, the good deeds of uh, other people okay or by um, having a uh, bad perception that this person is doing it out of ostentation out of riyah for example mm -hmm. we shouldn't have that kind of attitude lah. we should actually be more motivating if it is uh, whether if it is um, upon uh, not a decent intention, then we should leave it uh, to him and, uh, and Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. But uh, for that matter, we should actually encourage one another to do good deeds and motivate uh, ourselves because we do need motivations, Correct. especially these days. And Alhamdulillah, we also know that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala <coughs> accepts uh, good deeds, however small it may be, yes. just as long that we are sincere in that action. Now, besides uh, good deeds, uh, Ustaz Martin, uh, I'm sure. Um, if no good deed is too small, I would also think that no question is uh, too what's the word, eh? too small, eh? too, small. Or, uh, to, to ask, right? Yes. Uh, so in terms of questioning, in Ramadan, there are a lot of questions Masha that you Allah. may have uh, regarding how to practice Islam in this month and particularly in this situation. So uh, we, uh, we want to show you yes. uh, this very interesting video with regards to um, answering some of your most uh, frequently asked, asked questions on Google. On Google. Okay, are we one meter? Yeah, one meter, but okay. Fine. Have to roll in. Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. We go to search engines to look for answers for many of the religious questions that we have. In fact, there's a popular term we call today, Sheikh Google. However, not all answers out there provide the relevant context to where we live in. So here at Muslim.sg, we bring you Asatiza from the Asatiza Youth Network to provide you with the bespoke answers for your most searched questions on Ramadan. Is it allowed to use perfume during Ramadan? Of course, it's allowed to use perfume because we still want to smell nice. So it does not invalidate the fasting. So no problem. Is it allowed? To cut hair during Ramadan. <laughs> yes, you can actually cut your hair during Ramadan. What you are not allowed to do is to cut Q. Yes, cut hair is okay. Cut Q is no no. Can I lose weight in Ramadan? It's your choice, of course. But Islam always give us guidelines. If Islam always encourage us to pay close attention to our health. We should eat moderately. Don't overconsume and don't waste the food. Can I work out in Ramadan? I think a general rule is that if you know yourself and your training is not too hard, then it's fine. One hour before Maghrib, before the breaking of fast, we can exercise during that moment because immediately after that, we can replenish our body. Is it allowed to listen to music during Ramadan? Yeah. <laughs> your voice is music to my ears. Wow. <laughs> okay. Music does not invalidate the fast. If it is something uh, soulful, something which will enrich you spiritually, mm. then it should be fine. Is it allowed to brush teeth during Ramadan? 
Yes, you can brush teeth in Ramadan. Uh, what should I suggest all of you is to actually brush your teeth right before subuh and right after you iftar. Is it allowed to kiss during Ramadan? Is that my question? I think it... I typed that before. Wow, okay. <laughs> It is permissible if we are confident that uh, the mere kissing will not cause arousal that lead to sexual intimacy, then by all means. But if we are not so sure or we are sure that it's going to lead to sexual intimacy, then better to avoid and refrain ourselves from kissing during normal bond. Even if we cannot kiss our wife during fasting month, there's so many ways to show gestures of love. Yes. Cook for your wife. Mashallah. So many other things that we can do. Is it allowed to smoke during Ramadan? Smoking is prohibited uh, during the fasting itself because um, of the particles that will enter our body and it will invalidate our fast uh, such that we are obliged to make up the fast during other days. This is our chance to actually quit smoking during Ramadan this year. Inshallah. Inshallah. Can I fast in Ramadan during period? I mean, not me. <laughs> Again, sorry. Again, it's not Again. me. It's what people out there type. Again. So, the answer is no. Basically, if you're in menstruation, when you're on your period, you don't need to fast. You just need to call God. Can I fast in Ramadan during pregnancy? For a pregnant lady, you can still fast if uh, you are physically fit and able to do so. By that, I mean that you have to seek the advice from the doctor. There are two things to take note of. The first one, if it is due to your own uh, concern about your own self, your own health, then you only have to make up your puasa, your fast. The second one, um, if it is the concern over yourself and also your baby, then you have to call out to make up the fast and also you have to pay the fidya. That's all for some of your most searched questions on Ramadan. Now we are living in this pandemic situation, our mosques still closed. Ramadan will be different for us this year. Yes. So what will be your advice to everyone out there, how we can actually make the best of this Ramadan? That's a very beautiful question to start and also set at the same time. Most of us think that Ramadan uh, is best spent in mosques. Now that we can't, be, we can't do that, you know, it feels as though what's there left in Ramadan. Maybe we can prove to ourselves and also to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that even if the mosques are closed, but the mosques are in us. One very good spirit that uh, a Muslim need to adopt that we always have to find positivity in every situation that we are in. And so therefore in this Ramadan, I think we need to reinvest God in our own homes. Where uh, everyone in the family get together to enhance each other spiritually. That's all we have for today. For more content from the Asatiza Youth Network, follow muslim.st. Assalamualaikum. Alaikum. Well, so that's uh, quite a cool video uh, on Google Autocomplete. Uh, so if you will want to get your questions answered, then please uh, you can watch that video again, inshallah, afterwards. Uh, Sabda Martin, moving on with this topic on mercy. Eh? Yes. Uh, as the Asatiza of uh, AYN have mentioned that we are in a different situation now. We yes. all know the situation with COVID. Um, so perhaps some may ask, if Ramadan is truly the month of mercy and forgiveness, then why are we facing such a challenge, particularly in this month of Ramadan? Why are we facing this difficult difficulty? Yes, it, it's, a, it's a valid question actually. Uh, and I think, um, I think most of us would, uh, would think or ask that kind of question. I mean, it is a month of mercy. We look, uh, we, we, we've been talking about uh, the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it being... Uh, uh, being um, All-encompassing. All-encompassing. All right? all, uh, hmm. Limitless. Limitless. Hmm. Uh, Okay. So, <laughs> be, be short. <laughs> okay. So, so yeah, if we have mercy on one hand, and then we have these challenges in Ramadan. So some people might so think, hey, it doesn't tell you. Why it doesn't why, add up? Yeah. yeah. Why is it happening this way? So I, I think uh, to answer that question, I think we should um, actually explore on the idea of uh, of uh, of bala uh, by itself. Hmm. But before that, uh, I like to um, remind um, remind uh, before that to remind uh, once again. We discussed on the the the, the definition of mercy, mm. or, or we, we tried to explore on what is mercy, the mercy of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and we understand that the mercy of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is not measured by by the upliftment of our uh, meaning, as though, uh, it, it's not based upon what our our desires or our wants. Mm -hmm. Being Allah Subhanahu wa Taala's kindness is based on His wisdom and His uh, divine divine mercy, Decree, yeah. which transcends our desires uh, our what we think is best for mm. us and so in that sense uh, with that uh, in mind we can uh, uh, move on to to try to understand what is bala yeah, what is yes and yeah. uh, a bala is basically it's a, it's a, it's a test like uh, like how you mentioned such as one but now 
uh, the thing about tes or balad, um, we often associate or affiliate with um, hardship, uh, eh? hardship or something that is bad in nature mm. um, or wicked in nature. Mm. Now to that, Allah SWT mentioned um, in Surah Al-Anbiya, uh, you know, where Allah SWT mentioned, بَعْنَا أَعُوذُ بِنَا شَطَيْنِ الرَّجِيمِ وَنَبْلُوكُمْ بِالشَّرْوِ وَالْخَيْرِ فِتْنَةً وَإِلَيْنَا تُرْجَعُونَ Where Allah SWT mentioned, we test you all through the bad and the good. Mm. Now in this uh, verse, Allah SWT has actually uh, uh, tell us or tell us uh, that now tests are not merely something that is bad in nature, but it is uh, it comprises of both good and bad as well. Mm. Some of us are uh, are probably uh, being tested not just by things that are seen bad um, or physically de or, or depriving, right? or, de or depriving, but something that is uh, good as well, such as uh, being uh, tested with um, uh, rich richness mm. or yep. uh, of providence. Yes. Uh, this reminds me of another ayah in Surah Al-Fajr. Eh? فَأَمَّا الْإِنسَانُ إِذَا مَبْتَلَهُ رَبُّهُ فَأَكْرَمَهُ وَنَعْأَمَهُ فَيَكُلُ رَبِّي أَكْرَمًا We also know that uh, Allah says that when the human being is tested uh, by his Lord with generosity and when given blessings and bounty, then he will say that I am truly um, uh, being honoured by mm -hmm. Allah. So we understand that yes, tests come in both form, uh, hardship and also through ease. But what is... Uh, what is uh, what has the Muslim? What does he need to do? Yes, what is important? Yes, what is important for 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 us to um, reflect on 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 these tests is mm -hmm. that, uh, or to make meaning or find meaning eh, through through these tests is to 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 understand what is then the objective of us being uh, uh, being faced with uh, with these uh, uh, tests or, yeah. or or challenges. Mm -hmm. Now scholars have, I believe, scholars have uh, helped us um, clarified for us, and they have mentioned to us that. In facing these tests, the objective in going through these tests, or this series of tests, uh, uh, perhaps, is to um, for Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to see uh, on our deeds whether we are truly uh, sincere in our love for Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, mm -hmm. whether we are truly um, uh, showing patience. our patience, and to repent to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. So again, it is to 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 struggle and to and to strive lah, and it, it is not. Um, Easy, eh? I believe most of us have went through a lot of challenges in life, mm -hmm. and it's it's a it's a valid struggle, and therefore it is important for us to again remind this over and over with one another mm -hmm. to motivate us to uh, to go through this uh, struggle and uh, challenges together. Yeah, uh, part of that motivation is remembering this hadith of the Prophet Sallam. He said, "Ajaban li amril mu'min." It's quite interesting the affair of a believer, because inna amrahu kullahu khair. Every affair of his is good. وَلَيْسَ ذَاكَ لِأَحَدٍ إِلَّا الْمُؤْمِنِ إِنْ أَصَابَتْهُ سَرَّاءُ شَكَرٍ When um, ease happens to him, mm. right? blessings happen to him, then he is grateful. Mm. Right? So the test in terms of blessings, then he shows his gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, and that is good for him. فَكَانَ خَيْرًا لَهُ وَإِنْ أَصَابَتْهُ ضَرَّاءُ صَبَرٍ and when he is being afflicted hardship, he practices patience. Fakana khairan lahu, and that is good for him. So, Alhamdulillah, I think uh, let's uh, take strength eh, that even though in Ramadan, that it's a month of mercy, uh, but we are also facing it in a different manner. Inshallah, if we are thankful for all that Allah has given us, that is good for us. And if we are patient for the test which Allah gives us, then that is also good for us, Inshallah. Allah. So, in fact, Ramadan is not just a month of mercy, it is also a month of striving. Eh? I believe uh, it is a month of uh, striving for the good deeds, of being, or, or for being patient, and being patient um, necessitates one to be rewarded by Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. We, we can see a lot of uh, in, uh, in uh, the rewards in the Quran, where Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala uh, promises uh, mm. the rewards for those who are patient to be granted with the love of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, uh, uh, or in Ma'iya, or uh, with uh, being um, uh, accompanied, uh, or being um, to yes, to be. <laughs> Um, with Allah. Close uh, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yes. yes. and, uh, so and you said something very good Ustaz Abdul Mati eh? uh, Striving So we don't only strive for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy But we also strive for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's immense forgiveness right? uh, And so perhaps this could be the, the one of the last things we share with you tonight yes. uh, In terms of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness Yes uh, So uh, I believe there is a hadith um, by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Such as one yes. I think he mentioned uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa mentioned أول شهر رمضان ورحمة. Okay, meaning the first, the first or the first part of Ramadan is mercy. وآخر sorry وأوسطه مغفرة. And the middle part or the middle of Ramadan is the forgiveness of Allah سبحانه وتعالى. And وآخره إتقوا من النار. The expiation or relief from 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 the hellfire. May Allah سبحانه وتعالى 
grant us I mean. uh, uh, His mercy, His forgiveness, uh, and being uh, relieved or being uh, saved and protected from the hellfire. And, and so, and who, who else do we ask uh, forgiveness from uh, if it's not from Allah subhanahu, subhanahu wa ta'ala? Right? In Surah Az-Zumar, I think you can see this on your screen. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, O my servants who have transgressed against themselves by sinning, do not despair of the mercy of Allah. Indeed, Allah forgives all sins. Indeed, it is He who is the all-forgiving and the most merciful. MashaAllah. This is a very beautiful verse. Eh? Yeah. I believe uh, if we have uh, come across uh, this verse, those of you who have uh, come across this verse, um, I believe this verse really speaks to us uh, in volumes. Eh? It, it actually um, <coughs> empathizes our, our nature of being... Um, uh, uh, being full of shortcomings, yeah, a lot of shortcomings. You know, make mistakes in our life. <coughs> we have sinned in our life, uh, but, but we that, want to change, right? Yes. We want to change. We want to mend our ways. We seek Allah's forgiveness, <coughs> and truly, it is Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala who is already willing to forgive. Mashallah, this is very, very beautiful yes. and very motivating. Mashallah, don't, don't despair. Do not give up. Do not despair in Allah. And then there's another verse: "Wa yaghfiru zunuba illa Allah." Who else? Is there to forgive us except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Perhaps you want to share with us uh, one more thing, Ustaz Abdul Matin? Yes, uh, so um, the fact uh, in light of um, uh, we are approaching the middle uh, month, uh, the middle of uh, this month of Ramadan, mm. now we are in the seventh day of Ramadan, eh? you know, we are approaching the tenth day, the middle uh, month, uh, month portion, of Ramadan, yeah. the middle mm. portion of Ramadan. Uh, and in fact, uh, with that, uh, there is also the hadith by Rasulullah mentioned where he, where he said, Inna shaytana qala wa izzatika ya rabbi la burahu aghwi ibadak So Satan said, uh, by your might, O Lord Okay, this is all, although uh, as though as there's a conversation between uh, the, the Satan and Allah SWT Where, where Satan said, by your might, O Lord Okay, the point, uh, but in fact the Satan also acknowledged the, the might of Allah SWT mm -hmm. I will continue to mislead the, the children of Adam Okay, as long as their souls are in their bodies And with that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala replied, the Lord said, By my might and my, ma and my majesty, I will continue to forgive them as long as they seek my forgiveness. MashaAllah. Masha this uh, hadith actually showed us that uh, even though we have um, uh, went through uh, some of these challenges and we might fall again into the same pit hole, it is important for us to you know, do not despair from, from this um, uh, from forgiveness, yeah, we know we know who to ask forgiveness from. Yes, eh? we should always always approach uh, and seek Allah Subhanahu wa Taala's mercy. Mm -hmm. And Allah is not tired to forgive us. So if we uh, fall into sin, repent again. Fall into sin, repent again. Inshallah, Allah is not tired of forgiving us. And truly, the true enemy here is Shaitan himself, eh? trying to dissuade us from the, yes. the mercy and forgiveness of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Alhamdulillah, uh, I guess we've reached the end of the the the, the whole uh, segment, session, yeah. the session, uh, and now we want to read some of your comments. Yes, right? so Let's I believe uh, we going. have um, uh, okay, we have one by uh, Rina Hussein uh, where uh, do I share here? Allahumma inni as'aluka al-afwa wal-afiyah fi dunya wal-akhirah. Oh Allah, I seek as'aluka al-afwa wal-afiyah, your forgiveness and your protection. In this world and the hereafter, mm. this is a very holistic dua. It covers both this world and the hereafter, and they mentioned two best things to seek for, which is forgiveness and protection. Allah, beautiful dua. We have uh, a comment from Hafiz Adnan. Rabbana hablana min azwajina wa dhurriyatina kurrata a'yunin wa ja'alna lil muttaqina imama ah, Allah, Famous Allah, dua eh? MashaAllah uh, I think we read this last week also MashaAllah <laughs> It's on the lips of a lot of people uh, And so uh, yes, we pray that Allah SWT makes our spouses, our children and ourselves also as good leaders of the, the people who have taqwa inshaAllah MashaAllah And also we have uh, another dua here by uh, Sinu Ali Azli where uh, it is mentioned here, Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana mm. wa fil akhirati hasana wa qina azab al nar. Oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, oh Lord, uh, I seek uh, the best uh, fi dunya hasana, the best of this world and the best of the hereafter as well. Mm. And wa qina azab al nar, to protect us from uh, the hellfire. So again, another very holistic dua. Eh? Thank yes. you very much for all your comments and all your dua, mashallah. It's truly Inshallah. helpful to all of us watching. We have uh, two more comments. One is from Hishamuddin Ibn Kusaini when he asks, uh, Ustaz Abdul Martin, can we share our good deeds? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think we covered that uh, earlier eh, about yes. sharing good deeds. So, uh, it's uh, all the intention. I, yes, it's be, it is based on intention. It is good. Uh, in fact, uh, there's a hadith where Rasulullah mentioned, Mandala ala khairin, those whoever uh, points out to something that is good, okay, his rewards will be as though as the person who have done or benefited from that good uh, deed. That good deed. So yeah, it is. Uh, we are able to uh, to to point uh, to share with others, but it's important for us to note about our 
our intention mm -hmm. and uh, I believe um, it's also important for us to try to conceal our good deeds because it is closer to sincerity as well. Yeah, and, and in that note, uh, Ms. Fauzia, she says it, in doing good deeds, as the saying goes, what your right hand can give, your left hand should not know. MashaAllah. Allah 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 Thank you for ending the comments with that. Um, so we try our best to do good deeds. If we can share it, share it. If we can consider it, then uh, perhaps all the better as well, inshallah. Yes, inshallah. Alhamdulillah, uh, I guess we've reached the end of the whole session tonight. Uh, Allah's mercy encompasses everything. Uh, and <laughs> before we leave you, we just want to uh, remind you that in the month of Ramadan, there are a lot of uh, I programs, think good content, and initiatives. programs, initiatives uh, online. So, you know, the, you can go on YouTube yes. and you'll find Salam SGTV. MashaAllah. Right? Salam SGTV. <laughs> and uh, Salam SGTV, you'll find um, programs in English, Malay, uh, Tamil language, MashaAllah. Yes. You'll, you'll even find kids' programs yes. on that channel. The programs there are quite uh, diverse. Uh, yes. And I believe you also have uh, another program uh, by Muslim SG as well, mm -hmm. which is uh, entitled uh, Our Ramadan Journey, where a lineup of uh, Asatizas will share um, some of their, I mean, they will give some uh, brief sharings based on uh, thematic uh, topics. Mm -hmm. So it's quite. Um, when will this be happening? Saturday? This will happen, inshallah, on Saturday. Saturday. Uh, we'll starting from uh, this coming Saturday, lah, inshallah, eh, 12 pm. Okay. You can see the picture there, yeah. Yes, inshallah. And so, uh, with that, um, <laughs> should we run with the du'a of Sir Shazwan? Yeah, please, lead us in the du'a. MashaAllah, I like how Sir Shazwan comes to, eh? MashaAllah, we should learn that from Sir Shazwan. So, uh, I think uh, Sir Shazwan mentioned about his uh, favourite du'a. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would like to end with uh, a du'a, um, not just uh, a favourite du'a, but also a du'a that is um, encouraged by our teachers and our scholars to recite, especially in this month of Ramadan. Mm. Uh, and the du'a goes with, Allahumma a'inna ala suyami wal qiyami Quran, lisan, and just you know uh, to share now this dua is to help uh, to seek the assistance and the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, to, to, to observe our fast and it, uh, we know that it's not easy okay uh, to, to observe our fast in a very complete manner uh, to you know to wake up in the night to do our night vigil prayers it's not easy as well so we seek assistance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَقِرَاءَةِ mm -hmm. to, to read the Qur'an. And also وَحِفْذِ lisan Now to abstain. And now we know that fasting is not just to abstain from food and drinks, but also to abstain from the bad traits that might um, affect our heart. And so one of it is to through protecting our, 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 Tongue. our tongues mm -hmm. from saying things that are not meant to be said in this mm -hmm. month of Ramadan and uh, other months as well. وَحِفْذِ lisan وَقَدِّ basar From seeing things that, are with own, with that we are not meant uh, to, to, to look to ponder upon. And so with that, uh, we shall recite again this dua. Allahumma a'inna ala siyam wal qiyam wal qira'at wa qira'at al-Qur'an wa hifzi al-lisan wa ghaddi al-basar. Wa sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam wa alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Thank you all for watching. Thank you for watching uh, and we pray that Allah SWT will forgive us of our sins Inshallah. and give us strength to forgive others as well. Ameen. Inshallah. Ameen. So Inshallah. look out for the next session of Just Us AYN Facebook Live. Uh, for more Islamic content this Ramadan, inshallah. inshallah. Thank you so much. Have a good night. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.